Do we have any any motions this evening? Uh, Brent Brent informed me that he's not going to be here till uh, six forty five. He had a he had a previous commitment. So the the one question I had, Mayor, on um, On the uh, on the request for um, F, uh, legislation for F twenty dash thirty six to um, to amend the uh, the budget for the Care Act's coronavirus relief funds. Yeah, is that something that we uh, we need to have a special meeting or just let that go through the, the uh, three reading process. You're talking uh, where, which one is? Uh, oh, this, is one? this is from, Kat, uh, from the finance director. Mr. President, if I may, that was sent to me and then she canceled it because they have to make some changes. So it is, and she reconfirmed that. So it's officially withdrawn tonight. Oh, okay. All right. It's not ready yet. Okay. I mean, my recommendation would just be to, uh, when we are ready for it, to just suspend it and pass it. It's just the acceptance of grant money. Right. Um, I would hope that that no one disagrees that we should accept uh, $366,000 in grant money. Um, that is our tax dollars coming back to us from the federal government. But if there are objections, then we can gladly hold special meetings for it. Well, hopefully nobody will object to getting money from the federal government, so. Well, I hope not. Um, we do have two requests for suspension this evening, though, if I could present those now. Sure. Um, that would be Ordinance 2079. Um, and that is, uh, as you'll see, uh, it's for the health insurance line. Um, we have an employee um, that uh, switched insurance. Uh, so they, they added additional uh, family members onto the plan. So the insurance cost went up, so we have to cover that. Um, and then ordinance uh, 2081, we are also requesting suspension. Um, and that is returning money into the general fund from a couple of advances that we did for projects. Uh, so that's just our own money being returned from one fund to another. Um, but obviously we all know the, the financial ramifications right now. So any additional money into our general fund is great. That project is done and closed out. So that is the money remaining that we had to advance into that account. We need to bring it back now. Okay. Uh, ben, you signed those? Yes, I did, Mr. President. Okay. You okay with that? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Well, we've had some positive news on the uh, on the uh, on the income side of things here in the last several weeks. So, at least right now, it's moving in a good direction. So, I know we can't get overly excited about it, but but I guess it's better than um, having it continue going south on us. So. At least, it's, at least it's a positive. Ben? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would be ever so interested if we have just a few moments of hearing the typical set list of the cherry bombs fronted by one Kathy Kaufman of the Finance Department, as I learned about in the Advertiser Tribune the other day. Yeah, they did a, a really nice article. Um, I don't know if you like 80s music, but that's a lot of what we do. We do a lot, some 70s okay. music also. Don't pick on my lead singer. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> I'm excited. I want to go see him once concerts that's are allowed again. The reason to come see us. It's not necessarily any of the rest of us. It's all her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. We'd love to have you all come and see us. And it was great when we played Cherry Alley. That was yeah. that was wonderful last year. Just really had a blast with that. But we do a lot of Benatar. We do um, some Duran Duran. We do, um, I'm trying to think now, some ELO. 
Um, Put you on the spot. Let me think. <laughs> uh, who else did we do? Um, Van Halen. Nice. So, Journey Sticks. There's a little bit of Pink Floyd in there, if you like that. Um, tried to just a big cross cross section of that era and seems to be pretty popular. People really like it. So, and it's, I've been having a blast doing it. So. Very fun. Yeah. Kathy has a talent I didn't know you had. So that surprised <laughs> me. Well, it took a while to get used to that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Kathy, can we turn Ben's T into a G? Yeah. Oh. That's ben Gillett. <laughs> yep, that's me, your friendly neighborhood Evidently, counselor. Evidently, I was having a little trouble with spelling today or typing when I set this up. I messed up Bridget's and Ben's. Oh, goodness. I got to my palindrome. I think Tyler fell down. Uh, <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> Coming to you live from the uh, Tiffin Riviera. There you go. Is that your platoon boat? Yeah. Social distancing. When are you going to fly to all of us down there? Um, whenever you want, Rich. Will it fit all of us on? Will it fit all of us? Yeah, we can hold twelve on here. Twelve, okay, yeah. Bear in mind, you have me to account for. <laughs> You're fine, Ben. This thing, this thing will hold us. Yeah, we got a social distance, so I don't know. Do you want me to continue with Facebook Live for now or stop it and restart it again um, when we get to business? Um, yeah, go ahead and continue, Kathy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, technically we're still in. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, probably I'll just continue. All right. This, um, is there any, um, any other? Any other suspensions, any motions, anything else that? Gusma Jones? You're muted. There you okay, go. yeah, I'm gonna say I'm outside here. It's hard for me to see. Uh, very minor, maybe it's just one of my pet peeves, and I have a lot of them. But uh, Council Clerk Forrest told me that she had the agenda for July 6th on Facebook, and I went to Facebook and Tiffin, and I scrolled down and I saw it. And then today or yesterday, I said to myself, self, I'm gonna look again on Tiffin's City Council Facebook, and I clicked on it, and maybe it's operator error, but the first thing I saw was the agenda from April 14th of 2014. And I said, again? And then I scrolled down, scrolled down, and then I saw some current stuff. Is there, and I guess I'm thinking for the, and again, I'm always talking to the average person, and I consider myself an average person. But if yesterday or today, I wanted to look and see when is the next Tiffin City Council meeting, and what are they gonna discuss? And I clicked on that website, and I saw April of 2014, I would not scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and finally see the agenda. So is there, some way we can get that agenda on the front page or the top of it. Well, we, we're having a few problems with the um, with the website, so uh, those things are being looked at right now. But um, it's uh, it's nothing we can handle right now until we get the uh, until we get the website corrected. I don't know, Ann, um, Ann is there anything you want to add to that or I mean. We're trying to get all that. We're trying to get all that updated, and but we can't. Or we can't. We can't do anything right now until we make a few corrections in the website. Correct. That's right. Okay. Well, I just but don't bring it up. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it yeah. up. I mean, yeah. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah. 
we are aware of aware of it and we're trying to we're trying to get it fixed so anyone else When are we going to get some rain? <laughs> I think it's too hot to rain. I know. It is annoying. Kept watching yeah. it all yesterday afternoon blow on past again. Yeah. It's like, we want the rain. Things are getting really dry. Some of the corn looks kind of sorry, too, around here, so... That's not good. All right, anybody else? Because if nobody else has anything, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, the mayor has to leave early, early. So I'd like for him to give his, um, give his report um, next, if that's okay with everybody. So mayor, I'm going to ask you to, to uh, give us uh, your report for this evening? Sure, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, for those of you that weren't on when Rich and I discussed it before the meeting began, uh, I'm actually going to talk to uh, Tiffin City School kids as they're kicking off their summer learning camp tonight uh, via Zoom. So I'm going to jet out of here at about 7.10 and uh, have a go on another Zoom platform so I can chat with them over Zoom. And then uh, once I'm done with uh, the, the school kids, uh, if you all are still in your meeting, I'll be back on hopefully by the time we're voting on things. There's a lot of information in my report, so I want to make sure that uh, we're able to cover that and we don't miss out. Because if you guys have a quick meeting <laughs> without me, we may miss that opportunity for, uh, for an, another couple of weeks. So um, I know you all received this morning the financial update. Uh, with the, the current standing of the city financially. Um, we did have an uptick recently, uh, but that was completely expected. Uh, a lot of that, I'm gonna pull up the data now. A lot of the uptick was due to the fact that the income tax filing deadline was pushed off until July 17th. Uh, the, the deadline typically is July 15th. Um, so it's good and bad. Uh, for the month of July, we are up uh, nearly 130% uh, revenue-wise. Uh, the problem is, since April 1st, we are still down 17% uh, in revenue. Actually, the exact number would be 17.2% right now since April 1st. Uh, and that is due to folks not working. Um, there was a lot of layoffs uh, across the state, across the country with the shutdown. Um, Unemployment is uh, steadily decreasing. Uh, however, we don't have the local numbers yet uh, for the pre previous month, uh, but the state numbers have come in. They're down about another three or four uh, percent, but we've been running a little higher than the state average right now here in Tiffin uh, and Seneca County. Um, so it correlates. You know, unemployment in April was 21.3 percent. Our revenue was down 30 percent. Uh, unemployment in May was 14.8%. Our revenue was down 25%. And now we're waiting on the June numbers to come in. We know in June our revenue was down 22%. Uh, so we're expecting those unemployment numbers to come in about 11 or 12% for the month of June here locally. Um, so it's been a struggle. So since April 1st of this year, which is essentially right around the start of the shutdown, we are down 17.2% in revenue compared to last year's revenue, uh, which equates to about $634,000 of lost revenue in that time period. Um, this month, we will have a pretty exact picture on where we stand. Uh, right now, it is fairly certain of uh, the fact that we have passed the income tax deadline. Uh, however, uh, there's still some that trickle in. Uh, so I wouldn't get too excited. It looks like we're going to, to be down at least $600,000 uh, compared to last year just by the end of this month. Um, something else we need to think about is the economic recovery. Uh, unfortunately, the economic recovery uh, has been slow. Um, it's lagging behind as people get back to work. There is still the fear on what happens if things get worse and there's another shutdown. Um, 
So we can't expect from here on out that revenues are going to level off. In fact, it's probably very likely as we head into the month of August that we're going to see anywhere from 50 to $200,000 of, of lost revenue yet again in August. Uh, we would expect that to continue into September. Um, because if you look, you, know, you kind of throw April out because April is typical income tax reporting month. Um, so let's just take that out. If you look at June and May, uh, two months that were more of your typical months since they weren't tax deadline months. And we were down about $200,000 each of those months. Uh, we're expecting, like I said, anywhere from $50,000 to $200,000 of, of decline in revenue for the next couple of months until the economy gets back on track. And that's barring any other unforeseen circumstances such as additional shutdowns. So that's why really we've been so encouraging of the public to wash their hands as much as possible, follow social distancing and those sorts of things because we can't afford another shutdown. Our residents cannot afford another shutdown. Our factories and our businesses, our small businesses, none of them can afford a shutdown and us here at City Hall uh, for financial reasons. So um, we've got to do the best job that each and every one of us can do to ensure that we are, are continuing to keep that curve as flat as possible here in Tiffin and Seneca County. So, uh, luckily, our numbers continue to remain some of the lowest in the state as far as um, uh, cases, as far as hospitalizations, and as far as deaths. Uh, currently, there are 20 active cases in Seneca County. Um, something that is a little concerning is the fact that we have nearly doubled in our cases over the last couple of weeks. Uh, however, when you are working with as small of numbers as we have, um, it, 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 it's too excited just over a percentage increase. It's not like we're some of these larger counties where they have thousands and thousands of cases. Uh, if those are doubling every couple of weeks, we have a problem. Uh, so what we're continuing to do here locally is look especially at the number of hospitalizations um, because that shows us how our capacity is doing um, but we're continuing to monitor it i know i talked to beth schweitzer at the health department several times a week uh, she's been very good to work with and and very reliable as far as getting information to us um, however it does sound like the governor um, is considering uh, a statewide mask mandate uh, it has not come out as official yet uh, but it is under consideration right now. Um, from everything I've heard, the amount of counties uh, when the map is updated later in the week is going to increase significantly that have gone to red. So right now what they're trying to, to decide at the state is if they do a statewide mask mandate or if they're going to continue with just these red counties being mandated for masks. Um, but everything that we've heard is there's going to be a pretty significant jump in the amount of counties uh, going from either yellow to red or orange to red here in the state. Um, we know with our numbers, we will not be red this coming week. Um, but like we said, we just have to do our jobs here at uh, continuing to limit the spread of the virus. Um, so uh, with that, there's a lot of other things to uh, talk about that are, are not necessarily uh, coronavirus related. Um, good news uh, from this past week. Uh, we announced that uh, Tiffin was uh, ranked one of the most budget-friendly communities for renters uh, in the country. That was a study that was done by Lend EDU. Uh, they rank cities across the nation as far as uh, being budget-friendly or not budget-friendly for renting folks. Uh, they cited a number of reasons, the universities, um, added jobs in the local economy, uh, as reasons why Tiffin is such a good place. And the fact that the standard of living is much cheaper here. Uh, you look at a lot of uh, larger cities in Ohio, especially, uh, or even some of them like our neighbors over in Finley, Ohio, and how much more expensive the housing is and other items. And we really do have it good here in Tiffin with the fact that it's, it can be thousands of dollars a year less than you're paying in cities like Columbus and Cleveland and even Finley, Ohio. Uh, so that was some very good news. Uh, pretty cool to see Tiffin's own Ball Rikes uh, announcing three new flavors uh, to commemorate their 100th anniversary as a company. Um, you know, we just hats off to them because they're one of those Tiffin staples that I think when you think of Tiffin, Ohio, you think of Ball Rikes potato chips. And uh, to see them really come back with vengeance here and, and adding jobs and having a strong local business, uh, it's exciting. The, flavor, the new flavors are out in a lot of our local places and across the region. So, uh, 
you know, kudos to Ball Rights for thinking outside the box and also uh, congratulations to them on their 100th anniversary uh, here in operation. Uh, we also had another new business announced this past week. Uh, Kathy Danderan uh, opened her new massage studio in downtown Tiffin in the Laird Arcade. Congratulations. I know Councilman Schuff is the property manager for that building. So uh, nice job, Tyler, bringing, helping bring that business in. Uh, it's just nice to see people like Kathy uh, returning to the Tiffin community and opening up this business. Uh, it seems to be really the trend that we see is so many Tiffinites uh, move away in their younger years. And then they decide that Tiffin is a, a nice place to make a, uh, to, to either raise a family or to come home to. And they return open businesses, get involved in the community. So um, lots of kudos there with uh, the things going on. Um, some other items, uh, street paving uh, will get underway and finish here. Uh, it should get started later this week or into next week and will finish uh, in August. Uh, they're nearly completed. So if you didn't know the process, they first go through and replace all of the curb ramps on any of the streets that they're going to pave this year. Uh, so the reason for that is it brings the, the sidewalk in ADA compliance uh, and it's required also by the federal government. Um, whenever we make changes to the street or sidewalk, it has to be brought into ADA compliance. ADA stands for Americans with Disabilities Act. It, has, it, it essentially brings it so that it's safe for someone who may be blind or maybe in a wheelchair uh, or lack normal mobility. Uh, it allows them to be able to access different items. And our sidewalks are one of the items that must be ADA compliant. When we replace the curb ramps, it then makes that ADA compliant. So you'll see us go into a lot of areas and, and you, you add those little mats with the bumps on it. That is an ADA requirement. There's all sorts of different rules with how the slope of a sidewalk can be, um, so many inches per fall, per foot, et cetera. And that is so that it is wheelchair or handicap accessible. Uh, so the ramps are nearly done on all the streets that are being paved. Uh, street paving will start late this week or early next week and uh, continue through August. Uh, the Ella Street Bridge is on schedule, if not ahead of schedule. Uh, we've had a nice dry summer, as Councilwoman Yanatuno uh, remarked earlier. Um, they will be completed by August 14th, if not sooner, which is well ahead of uh, Tiffin City Schools uh, starting up. So um, very good news uh, with a lot of our projects. Uh, it's one thing, while, while a hot, dry summer is not good for uh, the farmers in the area, it's, a, it's very good for all of these projects um, that we are working on. Uh, another item of business, the Charter Review Commission will begin uh, meeting a week from today. So July the 27th, uh, the Charter Re Review Commission will begin that process. Uh, as you recall, the Charter Co Review Commission is formed once every 10 years and they look at the Tiffin City Charter uh, and propose any changes that they feel are necessary. For uh, We all know council knows what that is, but for the public who are watching, the Tiffin City Charter is essentially our local version of the Constitution. It is our operating document on how most of the offices and our structure of government works. We get a chance to update it or make changes once every 10 years. Uh, in 2020 is that 10th year. So the Charter Review Commission will begin that process on Monday. Um, council members, if you have any items that you would like to see changed in the charter, uh, please get them to uh, Brent Howard, the law director, because he would like to review to make sure that they are legal changes before they're presented to the Charter, charter Commission. Um, and also, if it's like years past have been done, uh, the Charter Commission will invite times for the public to come in with any proposal someone from the public may have as well. Uh, so that process is kicking off uh, one week from today on July the 27th at 5 p.m. Uh, and those meetings are open to the public. They will be held over Zoom um, just like this, uh, like we're doing right now. So we'll make sure we get that information out in case any of you want to just sit in and listen to the first one. Um, going through my list, I kind of jumped around so I don't want to lose things. Uh, I want to give uh, Bryce Kuhn and the Tiffin, uh, uh, Tiffin Seneca Public Library uh, a lot of kudos. Uh, they established a neat little story walk um, out at Hedges Boyer Park. So along the walking path, there are different stations and it allows K 
kids to go along and read a story. So at the same time that they're out and about uh, getting some exercise, walking the trail with mom and dad or something like that, uh, they're able to, at each different station, read another piece of a story. So that was a neat little collaboration. Uh, since the, li the library was not able to do a lot of their summer reading, that was one of the cool ideas that came out of it. So um, thank you, Matt Ross, the library, by Bryce Kuhn at the Parks Department. Just a neat little cl collaboration uh, to allow something for the kids to do this summer as they're out at Hedges Goyer Park. Hopefully we'll see more of that uh, into the future. Um, you probably had seen the link that Amy Reinhart had sent out, but Tiff, downtown Tiffin was featured by Heritage Ohio. Heritage Ohio is the parent company of Main Street here in Ohio that runs that organization. Uh, they're kind of the, the cream of the crop as far as uh, downtown redevelopment. They ran a very nice article talking about all of the things that the city of Tiffin and the downtown development committee have done to help our businesses start to come back uh, throughout the downtown. So it was nice to see that featured because any, one, any downtown that wants to be that, that really happening a live place really pays attention to what comes out of Heritage Ohio. And to see them feature us for all of the efforts that this group and the Downtown Development Committee and Amy Reinhart and our local businesses have done just shows us, you know, downtown Tiffin is a hot place to be. It's on the right track. And, uh, you know, thank you to all of you with City Council for supporting a lot of the things that we are doing in downtown Tiffin uh, to help with our businesses. A uh, couple of other items. Um, so a couple of not as necessarily good items. Uh, we did get a notice today from CSX that the Wall Street Railroad Crossing will be closed until July 28th uh, as they're going to be doing maintenance on that. It starts tomorrow. Um, my understanding of reading the information that was sent out, it will be opened back up on weekends, um, but it will be closed during the day for maintenance as they're doing uh, all sorts of work on the Wall Street Crossing. So. July 21st through July 28th, but it will be open on the weekend unless they run into some sort of significant problems. Um, and then uh, last but not least, uh, we are continuing to have a ton of trash issues at Hedges Boyer Park. Um, the park staff is becoming very frustrated with it uh, because, you know, you look at the pictures that Bryce Kuhn and Mason have sent us and it's not a trash problem that people could not find a trash can and they're just throwing it down like along the walking trail like you would expect. We're actually seeing the issue occur at the basketball courts and volleyball courts where people are leaving bottled water, Gatorade, cans of pop, et cetera, literally within feet of the trash cans, just letting them sit on the bleachers, throwing them on the ground, and they'll go out and they'll have the trash can be half filled uh, it's not like it doesn't fit and people are just not willing to walk it another few feet and throw it away. So because of that, um, they have erected permanent signage out at the park asking people to please uh, throw their items away. Um, I know they got the volleyball courts back up. That was one thing that they had done. They first put up some warning signs and unfortunately um, people were still trashing the volleyball courts. So the, the nets were taken down for a week. And the same thing uh, has happened now with the basketball courts and the tennis courts. Uh, signs were put up warning and they were continuously trashed. So they were taken down now for a week as well. Uh, they'll be put back up, but this can't continue. Um, we need to do a better job of keeping our parks clean. And there is absolutely no excuse when there are multiple trash cans right next to these courts uh, for the parks department to come in first thing after a weekend or even on during a weeknight. Uh, there was mornings they were coming in on Thursday mornings and the courts were just riddled with bottles and trash. Uh, there's really no excuse. Trash cans are right there in the area. So uh, we're asking the public to please do a better job of picking up after yourselves. Um, you know, we need to have pride in our community and uh, taking care of our parks will go a long way uh, towards doing that. Um, so with that, Mr. President, I just have a couple of events to let everyone know about. Uh, we're starting to slowly uh, get back in the swing of things. Um, tomorrow at Carmi's in the parking lot, uh, Hospice is holding a fundraiser. Uh, it's a bingo uh, night and you play from your vehicle. So you will not be out and about, you know, crowding tables with one another. You sit in your vehicle uh, and play bingo. Um, I've volunteered to assist with that as well as a few others. Uh, should be really, um, should be a really good event. 
so, and they're having a special burger night out at Carmi's to help help with everything. You don't have to RSVP or anything. Families are welcome. Show up in your vehicle, roll down the windows, uh, and play some community bingo and just enjoy the evening together and help out the hospice. Uh, then we all know bulk pickup is ongoing this week. Uh, it started this morning and runs through Friday. Uh, just set your items out at the curb the night before because they do start picking up very early in the morning and they will not come back through neighborhoods. Uh, it's on the day of your normal trash pickup. And then if they do miss you or they get behind, that is what Friday is for because they only pick up Monday through Thursday in the city. So Friday, they will come back through and catch up any areas that they may have gotten behind on. Uh, and then this coming Saturday is the next farmer's market, downtown Tiffin on Jefferson Street, 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. And last but not least, uh, the Seneca County Fair kicks off uh, a week from today, Monday, July 27th. Uh, the Seneca County Fair uh, kicks off and yet another uh, great time out there, a little bit different this year, but uh, we shall see. So with that, Mr. President, that's everything. I think I've left enough time if there are questions or we have any further discussion. Um, Councilman Schaff, you have a question for the mayor? <coughs> yeah, thank you. I um, just wanted to ask the mayor, this time around, as far as the um, review board goes um, for, the, for the charter, has it been hard finding people to volunteer for that, or do we have enough people going for those positions? No. In fact, um, now I'm trying to recall off the top of my head, I believe there was, uh, I think there were only four that ran and I had to appoint the other five. Okay. I know it's been uh, hard in the past to get people to come out for that. I was wondering if we're having the same issues again. Yeah, it's actually council and shuff very difficult. We have, I don't know how many of you have ever looked through the, the very large list of boards and commissions that we do have for the city. It is increasingly difficult to find people to sit on a lot of those different boards and commissions with the city. Um, it's just because a lot of them require a lot of volunteer hours um, and it's not always easy to find people. So if you, if any of you with city council ever have someone that comes to you that's interested in getting more involved with the community um, and may be a, a fit for a potential board or they're just interested in general, um, we all the time at least have a couple of vacancies just between shuffling different boards and whatnot. I think currently we have two or three boards with uh, vacancies. And I believe I also have at least two other boards that there are members that would like to get off, but they've agreed to stay on until there's a replacement found for them. So um, I don't even want to venture a guess. All I know is there is a lot of different boards and commissions within the city. And it can be a struggle because I would, if I had to guess, there's over 100 people, probably more than that, uh, because some of these boards are made up of seven, nine different individuals. Uh, so it can be difficult to keep all of the various boards filled within the city. Thank you. Councilman Jones. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. I have a question for the mayor. The Charter Review Commission understood it's every 10 years. Is that a one week process or a month process or a three months process, I guess? Yeah, it's about, a, it's about actually a year, Councilman Jones. Oh, is it? Okay, all right. Yeah. So. I, I guess really, I don't think there's anything spelled out just how long they have to take, but uh, it really depends on how many new items they have. Uh, it takes a while to get through the whole charter. Um, so I guess, you know, I have never been through it before myself, but Brent could probably answer because I think he's been through one, if not two of them. Uh, so maybe if I could, Mr. President, defer to Mr. Howard, who I think has joined us now. Well, Director, can you answer the question? Yes, um, uh, typically it takes about a year uh, because what they do is they systematically go through the charter they ask for um, uh, the city officials. You, you will be requested for comment about changes that you would like them to consider. Uh, they will have uh, several uh, meetings open to the public that will ask, uh, entertain um, public comment and proposals. And then they are supposed to wrap their uh, work up by next June and submit a report to council. And then council has to decide what uh, proposed changes that are being suggested go on the ballot. And then you'll, you'll enact legislation next summer 
to place the individual questions on the ballot. So it does take uh, quite a while. Um, and um, it, in the last, my two experiences, the last uh, two times, it's uh, uh, over a year process. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, well, I have everybody's attention. Um, I'd like to um, I'd like to go back to our original start time for the committee of the whole meeting at six forty five. If that's okay with everybody, I got a thumbs up from the mayor. So um, got thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> so without objection, we'll uh, go ahead and set the committee of the whole meeting uh, from now on at uh, regular time, 6.45. Thank you. I have a question for uh, Councilwoman Yanatuno. Uh, since you're talking about meetings, I've been asked, are we still meeting by Zoom next month too? Um, I'm going to say tonight, yes, we probably are. I think until, until things get squared away with uh, what the state's doing, and the impact that that has on us. I don't know, Mayor, do you have any comments on that? Um, yeah, I guess, you know, my opinion would be, I think council should continue to meet via Zoom for, for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, I don't want to say that we need to do the same thing the other governments are doing, but most governments have announced that they are going to do that until further notice. Um, even the Seneca County Commissioners just announced, it was either a week or two ago, that every commissioner's meeting for the rest of this year will be via Zoom. They're not going to hold any more in-person meetings the remainder of the year, um, just out of, out of an abundance of caution. And if you look, um, we're waiting for indicators that show that, that things are on the downward trajectory of cases, and we've not seen that yet. So our recommendation would be, and that even from the administration, and I believe the law director of the discussions I've had with him also agrees that we ought to just plan to be this way for at least for a while. Um, because it's going to be too difficult to get a, a proper system set up to allow people to come into the, into the chambers while still ensuring that all of the regulations are followed. Um, it, it's just going to, I think, be easier for all of us. And I love the fact, too, all of this increased participation that we've had in the meetings. Um, you know, I know a lot of us want to get back to seeing each other in person, but uh, Brent, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. I hate putting you on the spot without telling you ahead of time that I was going to ask you to say anything about it, but um, that's kind of where I'm at with things. And, and yeah, I, I would concur with your comments. And um, given what we are seeing right now, I think it's probably premature to to make a change to go back to in person, because what it may end up doing is uh, preventing participation unless we have a good way to continue. Uh, virtual um, participation. Some people may not feel comfortable attending an in-person meeting, so you're effectively preventing public input that way. So um, um, I think for now um, you should hold off, and I think we'll know, hopefully know a lot more in the next two weeks um, how things are going, and um, um, at your next meeting you, you can make maybe have a better uh, clear vision of what's going to happen in the next few months. Anyone else? I have a question for um, uh, something to think about, and I don't know what impact it would have and how everyone would feel about this, but um, a question for the law director. Would it make any sense, and would people agree with this? Uh, personally, I think that it's crazy to think about shutting down our economy again. And um, I'm just wondering if it would make any difference at all if we pass a resolution and send it to the governor, stating our, if people agreed with that, stating our, our position on that. Yeah, Mr. President, you asked for my comment. Um, council speaks through its resolutions. And um, so that would be a way to convey a message to state government on your feelings about uh, any particular issue. So you definitely can do that. Um, um, so you have every right to speak, uh, speak that way. Um, I would think that you'd want to develop the resolution and I would draft whatever you were thinking to make sure that 
it conveys, you know, a complete um, thought of not just a single thought because you need to understand um, if there is a more widespread, um, even in Seneca County, how are you going to go about um, responding to it and maintain business um, being open? And I think that that's important because I think we found that maybe there is a way that you can maintain um, the openness of the economy and still um, deal with the, the public health issue. That, that's what I think that we hopefully have come around so that we can test you know, trace and isolate people that maybe have it to prevent a more widespread um, of the, the, the virus, but at the same time, being able to maintain business because people are wearing masks, people are being socially distant. I mean, I've been able to um, maintain a lot of my um, business because um, I'm taking those precautions to in my day-to-day -day operation because I want to maintain business. We have to do that. So, you know, I think we need to think it through and develop uh, the, the resolution with all your thoughts. Um, those are my comments. Sorry, I got into a little more of the policy. No, I agree with you hundred percent. I, you know, you're, you're reading my mind. Um, I'll wear a mask, I'll social distance, I'll wash my hands, do everything that they're asking, but we just cannot we can't afford to uh, shut down the economy again. And I think that we have enough information today that we didn't have back in March that we can, do, we can, we can open things up and we can keep people safe. So how do the rest of you feel about that? Any Cosmos chef? Yeah, I totally agree with you, uh, Council President Vote. Um, I think we're a little more educated than what we were a few months back, I don't think uh, it's a wise idea for us to shut things down again, as long as people are being safe. I I think we should portray that to the uh, governor and let him know what we're thinking, but um, they, they, people are hurting right now and I don't. it'll be hard to sustain another blow like this, I think. Anyone else? Well, with your permission, I'm going to ask the law director to prepare a resolution, uh, prepare the language for it uh, of, of uh, what we talked about here, um, sending it to the governor. Okay. Yeah, I, I may reach out to many on council for some comments to develop uh, exactly what you're thinking, because this is not you know, I'm not the one voting on it, you are, it's your resolution. So um, along the lines, I guess that what I'm hearing and maybe what I expressed, uh, I might uh, try to draft uh, something um, and share it with others to, uh, to get comments on that it represents your views. Um, so look for that here in the next couple of weeks. Do we know if there's any other, com uh, any other councils, uh, communities that have done this? I'm not aware of any. Okay. Councilman Gillig. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Might it behoove us to assign this to maybe uh, economic development or, or the finance committee? Um, see if we can, you know, brainstorm some ideas together uh, and then maybe um, send it to Brett for approval that way. I think that, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. So, um, Having said that, I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn this over to the finance committee. It's a financial issue, and um, have you prepare something with uh, with the law director? Okay. All right. Is there anything else uh, for the committee as a whole? All right. Seeing none, we're going to uh, adjourn the committee of the whole meeting, and we'll get started here in a minute with the uh, regular council meeting. It's now seven o'clock and um, I'd like to um, welcome everyone to the July 20th, 2020 uh, Tiffin City Council meeting.
this evening. Um, Councilman Schuff will lead us in the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Schuff. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Schuff. Um, I'll ask uh, Council Clerk Forrest to please uh, call the roll. Councilman Schuff. Present. Councilwoman Boyle. Here. Councilman Gillick. Here. Councilwoman Yana Juno. Here. Councilman Jones. Present. Councilman Leopard. Here. Councilman Perry. Here. Let the record show that all seven members of uh, City Council were present. Did everyone have an opportunity to uh, read through the minutes? Are there any additions, corrections, deletions? Hearing none, um, without objection, the menace will stand as presented. We're now under committee reports. Finance Committee. <coughs> Mr. McGillig. No report at this time, Mr. President. Thank you. Long Community Planning Committee. Councilwoman Boyle. Uh, no report, Mr. President. Thank you. Materials and Equipment. Councilman Jones. No report at this time, Mr. President. Thank you. Personnel and Labor Relations Committee, Councilman Perry. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, will, I will mind remind you that I'm not an English major, so this might uh, it doesn't sound like a fifth grader. But a uh, Personnel and Labor Relations meeting was held Wednesday, July 15th at 4 p.m. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the education requirements to be promoted within the Tiffin Police Department, as well as any other business to come before the committee. In attendance. Okay, I think we've lost. Uh, I think we lost Councilman Perry. We'll skip him for right now and come back. Um, mm -hmm. Recreation and Public Property, Councilwoman Yanatuno. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, street sidewalks and sewers, Councilman Leopard. Thank you, Mr. President. Street sidewalk and sewer committee meeting was held Thursday, July 9th. 2020 at 5 o'clock p.m. at 129 First Avenue. Purpose of the meeting was to discuss petition number 103, an alley vacation, and any other business presented. Attending were committee members Steve Leppard, Tyler Schuff, Don Yanatuno, and Ken Jones, City Engineer Matt Watson, City Administrator Dale Thornton, Law Director Brent Howard, James and Suzanne Black, and Doug and Donna Cook. Petitioner requests that the alley be vacated between 125 and 129 First Avenues, terminating at the right of way of First Avenue and the easterly extension of the northernly right of way of Reserve A. I've heard inform those attending that the department review sheet was returned favorable for vacation. Several questions arose, and it was determined that the petitioners, in fact, on both properties and vacation would not create a dead end alley. Leopard apologized that the petitioners were not present for questions, but stated that he had made email contact with them informing of them, the, informing them of the meeting, but no response was returned. City Engineer Watson informed those attending of the East West Reserve A Alley, referencing the boundaries and partial vacation of a section between Jackson and Vine Streets. He also stated that he would like to see, if vacated, 
125 and 129 First Avenue lots to become one parcel instead of two. No further business, the meeting was adjourned at 5.27 p.m. With everyone still on site, with the exceptions of Jay, James and Suzanne Black, the meeting was reopened when the Cooks arrived at 5.35 p.m. The Cooks introduced themselves and informed the committee that their intentions are to remove the mobile home located at 125 First Avenue, remove a very large tree at the rear of the property, and build a garage large enough to store a motorhome along with other vehicles in storage. They also intend to remodel 129 First Avenue with a possible addition that would extend into the current alley. Natural gas line will also be extended from 129 to 125 First Avenue for the garage. The natural gas supplier informed them that a gas line could not be buried under a current alley, that it would have to be vacated. The cooks agreed that if the alley were vacated, that they would combine both properties under the parcel and also inform the committee that they would control access to the vacated alley to the satisfaction of the city with the barrier placed upon their property. Motion was introduced by Tyler Schuff to approve petition number 103, an alley vacation. The motion was seconded and ordered by a four to zero vote. Law Director Howard outlined the time frame of the petition and probable dates of vacation if approved. Petitioners were also advised of fees that would incur, that they would incur. With no further questions or concerns between the cooks and the committee or city representation, the meeting adjourned at 5.45 p.m. Chairman Leopard contacted James and Suzanne Black on Monday, July 12, 2020, and advised them as to what transpired after they left the meeting. His comment was he had no concern of the requested alley vacation. His only concern was that there would be no changes with reserve A. Respectfully submitted. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Are there any questions for Councilman Leopard? All right, uh, Councilman Perry, are you, uh, wait a minute, Councilman Jones? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, now's a good time, I believe. I just wanted to take my hat off to Councilman Leopard. I really appreciate him getting back the following Monday with James and Suzanne Black and updating them on what took place after they left. So talk about transparency, keeping people informed. That is uh, one great way to do that. So okay, that's off you. to Councilman Leopard. Thank you. Thank you. Law Director? Yeah, also to add um, about Ordinance 20-80, which is in your packet, that's the ordinance to vacate the alley that was the subject of the, uh, the meeting um, of the uh, Street Sidewalk and Sewer Committee. Um, I wanted to let you know what is not there. Um, typically, we put language in reserving rights for utilities for the city, um, but in this particular case, it, uh, in talking to the engineer, city engineer who was there and uh, looking at the situation, it appeared that there was no need to reserve any um, uh, rights to utilities for the city. Um, and if we had done so in the document, it would have created at some point a question, maybe a confrontation as to whether the, uh, the uh, um, property owners could actually build as they had uh, represented that they may build into the alleyway. So the ordinance that as presented does not include any reservation language about utilities. So there will be no rights that the city is retaining to put in a utility for um, um, storm sewer or um, sanitary sewer. Um, the city engineer noted at the meeting that the, those sewers had been separated um, as part of our sewer separation um, project and that uh, new sewers were out on the front in First Avenue. So there doesn't appear to be any need for the city to reserve those and we didn't in the document. So I wanted to make you aware of that because that's different than what you typically see when you see a ordinance that vacates an alley. The other item um, regarding that ordinance is that, uh, Mr. President, you will need to schedule a public hearing um, uh, either at the next meeting or at the third reading, uh, the second meeting in, in August, and there'll be a, a notice and advertisement regarding that. Um, but we have to have a hearing 
before you could act on the ordinance 20-80 to vacate the alley. Okay. Oh, um, any questions for uh, the law director or, or uh, Councilman Leopard? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Councilman Perry, are you back with us? Councilman Perry? I'm going to skip you and come back to you. Economic Development and Downtown Planning, Councilman Schuff. No report at this time, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Perry? Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, my internet. Um, yeah, so I guess I will just start over because I don't know where uh, it cut me off. Um, a personnel labor relations meeting was held Wednesday, July 15th at 4 p.m. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the education be promoted in the police department as well as any other business to come before the committee. Attendants were council members Dan Perry, Ben Gillick, Don Ayanatino, Ken Jeff, Chef, Mayor Mott, uh, City Administrator Dale Thornton, Chief Stevens, Officer Jake DeMonte, Officer Jason Windsor, and Deb Moore. Uh, explain how it came to happen as he's hearing complaints within the police department over at least a two-year degree to be promoted. He also stated, wondering if this requirement was putting the best person for the job in higher positions. Chief Stevens explained the requirements of the department back when he was an officer, and he went on to say in 1983 they added the education department. Stevens acknowledged the financial burden that an officer for the education. Also mentioned the FOP offers free education to help okay um sorry go ahead dan are you back All right. sorry it's uh in and out of here. yeah i think so keeps cutting out on me uh do do uh, Chief Stevens mentioned they have five years for new coming officers to obtain a degree to be in higher position. He mentioned the benefits in which classroom can offer such as different viewpoints and ideas. So doing away with the education was a slope because he thinks it would work all the way up to the chief position where education would be more important. Perry asked Stevens about having Chuck Boyer as a future chief deputy and how he currently doesn't have any education. Uh, chief Stevens explained he was currently going for further education, which Perry followed up, saying he understands completely why he picked uh, Boyer, because he is good at what he does and has heard nothing but amazing things about him as an officer. Uh, Perry also said he would be advocating for the Chuck Boyers of the future and explained the best people for the job should be the ones promoted. Officer DeMonte stated after 15 All right, we've lost uh, we've lost Councilman Perry again. <laughs> yeah, um, we're going to move ahead in the agenda uh, until Councilman Perry gets back. Uh, does anybody see a, a need for a committee of the whole meeting? Okay. Uh, at this time, I'd like to announce a public hearing to be held in our next. Um, regularly scheduled uh, council meeting, uh, August 3rd at uh, seven o'clock. Purpose of the public hearing will be to discuss um, ordinance 20-80, um, a petition to um, vacate uh, um, alley number 103 in the first, uh, first islands addition running south from First Avenue in the second ward um, in the city of Tiffin. Is there anything, any, is there anything else, um, uh, law director, I need to add to that? that no, that's fine. Okay, thank you. All right. 
Um, we're now under reports of officers. We've already heard from the mayor, clerk of council, and Forrest. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Director of Finance, Kathy Kaufman. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Law Director, Brent T. Howard. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. We're now under written communications. Yeah, finance director's request for legislation number F20-33 to amend the 2020 budget ordinance 19-84 in order to increase expenses in health and life insurance in the probation department budget. Uh, request for legislation F20-33 uh, will be held uh, on file in the clerk's office. Uh, legislation has been prepared tonight, ordinance 20-79. Finance Director's request for legislation number F20-34 to amend the 2020 budget ordinance 19-84 in order to increase expenses in credit card fees, fees in the sewer revenue department budget. Uh, request uh, Finance Director's request for legislation F20-34 will be held on file in the clerk's office. Legislation um, ordinance 20-79 has been prepared for tonight's meeting. And request finance director's request for legislation number F20-35 to amend the 2020 budget ordinance 19-84 and to approve the return of two advances to general fund in the amount of $31,562.97 and $97,990. I'm sorry. $97,994.34 and also approve the return of a transfer from TAP State Route 18 to general fund in the amount of $103,603.23. Uh, I have a question for the, a question for the finance director. Um, is this, are we moving ahead with this or was this, uh, was this request changed? No, we're moving ahead with this one. Okay, thank you. Um, finance director's request for legislation F20-35 will be held on file in the clerk's office. A legislation ordinance 20-81 has been prepared for tonight's meeting. And then, um, as I mentioned in the committee at the whole meeting, uh, finance director's request for legislation number F20-36 that is in the packet has been withdrawn um or some changes that have to be made to it well thanks for uh thanks for correcting me because i got confused oh, there. all right any other written communications no that concludes the written communications mr president okay we're now under oral, com oral communications anyone from the um the listening public uh who would like to address uh city council can do so by um, raising, uh, raising their hand, will be identified by uh, Mrs. Moore, and uh, you can direct your comments to the president of city council. Do we have anyone that uh, wishes to address the council? Mr. President, no one has raised their hand. Okay, thank you. We're now under motions. There are no motions. We're now under resolutions. Resolution number 20-27 introduced by Daniel Perry. Resolution approving mayor's appointment of Tom Schweitzer to the Seneca Metropolitan Housing Authority. This is the first reading of resolution 20-27. Councilman Perry. Uh, yeah, I would uh, vote that we forego the three-year rule and pass that uh, tonight. Okay, we have a motion to suspend the three-reading rule and pass Resolution 20-27. Is there a second? Okay. Wait a minute. Uh, it, a point of order, Mr. President, uh, the three-reading rule does not apply because this is an appointment that uh, by charter needs to be acted on at this meeting after it was announced at the prior meeting. So all you need to do is vote on the, the substance of the resolution. 
Okay, thank you. Is there a second to the motion? Councilman Shaw. I'd like to second, Mr. President. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Sometimes city council goes way too fast for me. I was gonna ask, what is the Seneca Metropolitan Housing Authority? Before I vote yay or nay on something, I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Could someone explain this SMHA to me? Uh, Law Director, do you wanna explain that? Yeah, it's, um, as best I can, um, because it's been a while since I've been involved with uh, Metropolitan Housing. But to my understanding, Metropolitan Housing is a program um, that um, property owners can voluntarily participate in to allow for certain um, benefits that, um, uh, that they will receive. Um, and, and, and I think this is a federal program that was started maybe decades ago. And it requires that there is a local um, uh, committee, um, and this is what you're appointing these people to, to um, hear any issues related to the administration of the program. Um, and I may be missing some more specifics, but in general terms, that's what this program um, and that's what the Metropolitan Housing Authority is uh, is for. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other any other comments or questions? Seeing none, um, we'll call the question. Councilman Shuff. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yanatuno. Yes. Jones. Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perry? Yes. Resolution 20-27 passes with a vote of seven to zero. We're now in your ordinances. Sorry. Ordinance number 20-74 introduced by Ben Gillig. Ordinance amending the 2020 budget ordinance 19-84 by $190. Increased expenses in dues and fees in the police department budget. This is the third reading of Ordinance 20-74. Council McGilling. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for council passage of Ordinance 20-74, please. We have a motion to approve Ordinance 20-74. Is there a second? Councilman Perry. I'll no second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any, any discussion? Seeing none. We'll call the question. Clerk will read the call, uh, roll. Councilman Shuff. Yes. Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yeah. Yanatuno. Yes. Jones. Yes. Leopard. He stepped out or said that he left the meeting. He's back now. I think yes. Mr. Le Councilman Leopard. You're muted, Steve. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Perry. Lost him. Law director, how do we announce, how do we, if we've lost, if we've lost the audio, how do we announce the outcome of the vote? We've got six. Um, let's see, we have, do you have, you have six, you have enough to, for passage. Yeah, okay. All right, so ordinance 20-77 passed with a vote of six to zero. And one disconnection. And one disconnection. <laughs> One thing I guess I would add too is that you have a rule that once these um, the voting on these matters starts, that no one is supposed to leave the room. <laughs> and um, um, in this case, you know, that is a technical difficulty. I would assume that you'd want greater participation. So if a council member is technically kicked off, but they can get back in, 
you would waive that rule just by a consensus, I guess, of everyone. I would assume that that would be the case. Councilman Perry, how do you vote? Uh, yes. All right. Very good. The ordinance 20 77 <laughs> passed with a vote of 7 to 0. <laughs> Ordinance number 20-77, introduced by Bridget Boyle, ordinance enacting chapter 343 of Tiffin codified ordinances, allowing and regulating golf cart use within the city of Tiffin. That is the second reading of ordinance 20-77. Ordinance number 20-79, introduced by Ben Gillig. Council President. Councilman Schaff. I'm sorry, before we go forward, I, I had a question for the law director about that uh, about Councilwoman Boyle's um, legislation. So, Law Director, I know the golf cart thing's been the uh, discussion here the last few weeks, but um, someone had asked me, and I wasn't sure how to answer this, but there are vehicles similar to a golf cart that aren't a golf cart or used for golf. They call them a shuttle cart. Um, does that fall under the category of a golf cart if somebody was to get one of those? I think Cushman makes them, and there's a few other producers, but they don't call it a golf cart, they call it a shuttle car. It's not equipped for golf, but what, would, what parameters would that fall under? Well, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, um, but it, it may be uh, meet the definition um, of an underspeed uh, vehicle. Um, I guess, Tyler, why don't you, um, following the meeting, let me know more details about, and what, what is it called again? What did you? There's different brands of them. They're not. They look similar to a golf cart. They're similar in size and build, but they're called a shuttle car. Um, they're not used for the game of golf, but more for transporting people. Um, they're a little bit higher of speed. They look like a golf cart, but they're not. And someone had asked me to go, "Hey, would this qualify?" And I wasn't sure how to properly answer that, so I thought I would ask you. Yeah, I, I, can, I, I can guess I would like to know the details of it to see if it fits into the definition of a golf cart, because um, um, there are certain definitions under the Ohio Revised Code that this ordinance uses, um, and uh, it might very well uh, meet the, the definition, but I'll need to learn more about, um, about that term that you're using. Okay. Councilman Gilly. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Councilman Sheff, are you talking about, like, the um... – the vehicles that are brought out, someone's in the football game. No, these these are these are different. Councilman Gillard. Anything else for uh, concerning golf cars? Ordinance twenty dash seventy seven. Okay, seeing no, we'll move ahead. Ordinance number 20-79, introduced by Ben Gillig, ordinance amending 2020 budget ordinance 19-84, increasing the health insurance expense in the probation department budget by $7,800 and credit card fees in the sewer revenue department budget by $5,000. This is the first reading of ordinance 20-79. Councilman Gillig. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for suspension of council's three reading rule and immediate passage of ordinance 20-79. We have a motion to suspend the three reading rule and immediate passage of ordinance 20-79. Is there a second? Uh, Councilwoman Yanatuno, sorry. I'll second, Mr. President. Thank you, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I've been out of the workforce for a period of time, and to increase the health and life insurance by $7,800 divided by 12, that comes out to $650 a month. Is this one family member that works for the city of Tiffin adding other family members to the tune of $650 additional dollars per month? Is that what I'm understanding? Yes, that's uh, correct. Is, Finance director. Is, it, yeah, that sounds you. like that sounds like a high number to me, but like I say, I've been out of the workforce, so maybe that's with inflation, maybe that's understandable. Well, this um this employee went from either a waiver or from waiver single to uh, including their spouse, and that is quite a significant jump as far as the cost goes on the health insurance. 
Thank you. Uh, item two, I'm not done. An additional $5,000 in the sewer revenue fund was at credit cards. And I know this, how did we not budget this $5,000 in the credit card for the sewer revenue department? Um, the credit card fees are something that are really hard to budget for. They have been increasing and it's something that I would like to look at. Maybe we would want to maybe have to start charging a fee to offset some of that. But in view of what everyone's going through right now, we just don't feel that it's the right time to do that. Um, and also, I think the fact that we have not actually been able to have people come in and pay, more people are actually calling in and giving their credit card payments over the phone. So we've had uh, an increase in that as well, which increased our fees. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other, any other comments or questions? Seeing none. Oh, Mayor? Mayor yeah. Mons? I just want to explain that a little further. So the fees, the reason that we need additional money for those fees is because, like Kathy said, a lot of people are paying with credit card. And right now, the city does not pass on the fees like most cities do. If you pay with a card, we're fighting that bullet to help out our residents. So that's why that increase is there. It's not because it, it, it wasn't planned for or budgeted. You can't predict how many people yearly are going to pay with a credit card. And right now, a lot of people are paying with credit, either due to the fact that they're trying to make ends meet, or because they're not able to walk in here and put cash on the counter or something like that. So there's a lot more people paying with credit cards. And unlike a lot of companies like the water company and others, we do not charge any kind of fees if you're going to pay your bill with a credit or debit card. We absorb those fees here. And that's what it is. So if council wants to change that, council has the right to, but uh, as it stands now, um, we make the residents pay, or we pay, we cover the fees for the credit card transaction instead of uh, passing that on to the consumer. Thank you. Councilman Jones? You, you, you're, you're muted. I'm outside here. Am I unmuted now? Yes, you are. You're good. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and we're passing the three reading rule because, because we need this $650 a month to pay for this health insurance, and we need the $5,000 to bring us whole on the sewer department revenues budget. Or is that the reason we skip? Correct. If, if we would wait, then we could go into a negative balance on those expense lines. So it would be better for us if we pass them now. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilman Gilling. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Kathy, do you anticipate we'll need all of the 5000 or is this just kind of the placeholder for the rest of the year and then um, I'm hoping that we won't, but I did ask for enough that I'm hoping we'll, we'll definitely make it through the end of the year. But since it's been so unpredictable, right. um, yeah, I wasn't sure of an exact figure. Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. And clear my head, and I keep saying for the public's benefit through listening in, this $5,000 is, pick a number, 500 people paying their sewer bill and they're putting it on their credit card and Tiffin is paying an extra one or 2% handling fee for credit card usage. Is this what this 5,000 is about? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other, any other questions or comments? Clerk, call the vote, please. On the, uh, excuse me, we'll call the vote on the suspension. Thank you. Councilman Shuck. Yes. Boyle? Yes. Ellig? Yes. Yanachuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perry? Yes. The suspension passes with a vote of seven to nothing. Nothing will now vote on the passage. Councilman Shuck. 
Yes. Boyle? Yes. Gillig? Yes. Danatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perry? Yes. Ordinance 20-79 passes with a vote of seven to zero. Ordinance number 20-80 introduced by Steve Leopard. Ordinance responding to petition number 103 Vacating an alley in First Highland Edition running south from First Avenue in the second ward of the city of Tiffin, Ohio. This is the first reading of Ordinance 20-80. Ordinance number 20-81 introduced by Ben Gillig. Ordinance amending 2020 Budget Ordinance 19-84 to approve the return of two advances to general fund in the amount of $31,562.97 from the Transportation Alternatives Project and $97,994.34 from the Miami Street Project and transfer $103,603.23 from Ta State Route 18 to the General Fund and declaring an emergency. This is the first reading of Ordinance 20-81. Council McGillig. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, since these projects are, are now closed, um, I would like to ask for Council's suspension of our three reading rule and immediate passage of Ordinance 20-81. Thank you. We have a motion to uh, suspend and pass, uh, uh, suspend the free reading rule <coughs> and pass Ordinance 20-81. Is there a second? Councilman Schaff. I'd like to second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will call the vote, please, on the, on the suspension. Councilman Schaff. Yes. Councilwoman Boyle. Yes. Gillig. Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perry? Yes. The suspension passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the emergency. Councilman Chuck? Yes. Boyle? Yes. Gillig? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perry? Yes. The emergency pass with a vote of seven to zero will now vote on the passage. Councilman Schaff? Yes. Boyle? Yes. Gilly? Yes. Yanatuno? Yes. Jones? Yes. <clears throat> Leopard? Yes. Perry? Yes. Ordinance 20-81 passes with a vote of seven to zero. Ordinance number 20-82, introduced by Daniel Perry. Ordinance amending the requirements for applicants to become the city's chief of police. This is the first reading of Ordinance 20-82. Councilman Perry, or Councilman Jones, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. President. I received this uh, electronically, as you know, 20-82. I was gonna call law director Howard, ask for clarification. <laughs> but I thought I'd wait for tonight's meeting for the public's benefit, if in my benefit, but whatever. And on ordinance 2082, and you all have it in front of you, under section one, item four, that last deal, and I, I'm calling it a deal, it's not a deal. I don't know what to call it. I just wonder why that's in there and can we just strike this from this ordinance and at the end of all of these schools, that would qualify to become a Tiffin chief police. It says, or any other police executive school program lasting 10 to 12 weeks emphasis on executive development management sciences shall be recommended and preferred, but not required. If we're not requiring it, why is that last three sentence, sentences in there? I'm just asking for clarification. Yeah, the, uh, existing, we... the existing ordinance um, has the, that language. This is nothing new. The only change to the ordinance is adding specifically, there was a reference, there was a mention in the committee meeting of the, um, the John Glenn College of Public Affairs Program, uh, Public Safety Leadership Academy. 
Um, the, the preference language was a uh, decision of council in the past and the committee discussed it and wanted to retain that, I believe. And that was the, also the recommendation of the various police officers that attended the committee meeting. Um, they felt that, that this was something that should not be specifically required, but that uh, they would prefer it and it would be an enhancement to an applicant's um, um, application for the, the job. Um, but they didn't want to make it a necessary requirement. Um, that was the, the thinking that I heard at the committee meeting. And as I said, that this has been in place um, for a while. Does that answer your question or was there something specific that you, are you just questioning whether it should be preferred or required? I was just questioning why it's in there because if it's not required, I like to keep these ordinances simple and if all that two and a half sentences isn't necessary, I suggest striking it from the ordinance. But if somebody wants to keep it in there from historical things, but 10 to 12 weeks emphasis. Well, it's, it's not, not a historical reason. It will definitely um, be used as a preference. You know, there are certain requirements that you have included in your ordinance for the, the chief of police. And then this is an item that might distinguish one candidate over another because they have certain um, uh, educational um, requirements as listed here that makes them maybe stand out above another candidate. And so you are laying out not only requirements, but then maybe additional items that w could distinguish one candidate from the other. And you're saying that this is a preferred um, a quality and, and experience that you would like to see a candidate have, and that can be used to make the selection. Okay, so it'd be like adding another line item on your resume when you're submitting to be the Tiffin chief of police. Right, and again, it's not required, and I don't think anyone has suggested that they want this to be required, but it, it is something that you can look to, a candidate can look to, and hopefully they're, they aspire to be the, the chief of police and they could, um, hopefully that they have uh, maybe participated in one of these programs and they can um, um, mention that in their application so that it stands out and again, could distinguish them from another applicant. So whether it's in this ordinance 2082 or not, they can still include it in their resume in their we, well, yes, but but it is. But we're telling you're telling applicants that this is something that will be considered uh, as part of their application, and they won't know this ahead of time. This ten to twelve weeks. Well, th this is this is part of the codified ordinances, so they will know this ahead of time. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Um, Councilman Perry, do you, do you have anything to add to your report? Um, <clears throat> you want me to try and uh, read it again, or I I can just no, email. No, no, right. just pick, uh, is there anything else in here that? No, I mean one thing about um, Officer Demonte kind of uh, mentioned that you know there's new schools popping up all the time, and and instead of going back to the ordinance and adding <clears throat> one school at a time you know, that, that would hit that qualification. You just add the language where um, they can do another comparable 12 to, you know, 10 to 12 week school that would give them the same training. Um, so they wanted those two schools added and then, you know, in, in case a, a future school were to pop up uh, so they could also be uh, counted, so. Okay. Anything else? Um, I'd like, I want a, a point of order. Um, I know that we're kind of relaxed here um, in our setup with, uh, with Zoom and everything, but I'd really appreciate it if everybody would just stay online. Uh, don't be wandering off, uh, especially when you're voting on things. It's important to have everybody's vote and uh, have, have everyone a part of the discussion. So I don't need you wandering off. Councilman Schuff. 
my apologies, uh, Council President. My phone is about ready to croak. I had to go grab a power pack, so my apologies. That's okay. I'm not mad at anybody. I just want to make sure that we are as efficient as possible. Is there anything else? Uh, anything else, uh, Councilman Gillig? <clears throat> Mr. President, um, I'd like to uh, discuss scheduling a finance committee meeting uh, to discuss uh, possible resolutions to send uh, uh, regarding another potential economic shutdown. Um, Councilman Schuff, Councilwoman Boyle, um, what's your availability? Are we looking at next week? Or? Were you thinking this week or next week, Ben? Do you have a preference? Um, honestly, I could do Friday. I mean, if that works for you guys. Um, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't do Friday. Okay. Um, I could do Thursday, um, like just after five. How about Thursday at five? Does that give us enough time to post and everything? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, Councilman Jeff, does that work for you? I'll make it work. Wonderful. Uh, then I'd like to announce uh, a finance committee meeting to be held uh, via Zoom on Thursday, um, July 23rd. Did I get that right? July 3rd. Mm -hmm. yeah. July 3rd. Uh, Thursday, July 23rd. Um, purpose of the meeting will be to discuss uh, language for a potential re resolution um, to send to uh, the governor regarding a potential economic shutdown. And if anyone else can make it, we'd sure love to have you as well. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to be there as well, Ben. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman Boyle. I'm sorry, Ben, did you say via Zoom? Yes. Okay, awesome. Sorry, thank you. I, I should probably ask Kathy, uh, is that okay? <laughs> yes, it's fine, thanks, Ben. Thank you. Anything else for Councilman Chef? Yeah, just a couple quick things. Wanted to go over, wanted to thank uh, City Administrator Thornton. Um, we had an alley that was getting in pretty poor shape um he got that right up there on the list and got that smoothed out it was back there kind of behind the Kaler buildings between the old bake shop and uh, uh that area so thank you for your speed on that um and i wasn't sure if the uh council was aware but uh, a few weeks ago there was a uh, very peaceful uh event they had in front of the courthouse in support of law enforcement um just want to say it was a very well attended event um i think we're pretty fortunate to live in a community where people can go out and uh, give their viewpoints and not uh, get too wild or crazy. It was just a very well attended event. The mayor was there, uh, Representative Ryan Key, uh, they spoke, it was a very well spoken event. And just, um, I, I like how we can have these types of things and people aren't uh, going wild, so. Thank you. Anyone else? Anything else for the good of the order? Mayor Montz. Yes, just quickly, I want to let council know that at our next meeting, uh, the city county comprehensive plan is going to be presented to city council. Uh, myself, Charlene Watkins, and David Zach will be presenting it. Uh, we're going to present mainly the city section of the plan. Um, the rest that is out in the county will not necessarily be presented nearly as in depth to all of you. Uh, but it will be available. The link's already been sent to all of you for reading. Um, and once it's been passed by the City of Tiffin, the City of Astoria, uh, Seneca County Commissioners, and the Seneca County Parks District, it will then be placed online by regional planning uh, for the public to be able to access that as well once all the, all the entities have approved it. But that will be at our next meeting. Uh, so I would say plan for probably a little lengthier of a meeting that night uh, as we kind of walk through that and answer questions. So if you have not had a chance to look at that link that I sent probably a week or two ago now, uh, make sure you review it before the next meeting. I don't say that you need to read every single page and understand every single detail of it, uh, but if at least you can get through the city section and have questions ready for either myself, David Zach, or Charlene Watkins, 
uh, it would be appreciated. And like I said, if we could have everyone there, it's great. Uh, it will be a little bit more of a lengthy meeting though because of that. Thank you. Uh, did everybody get a copy of that? Okay. So read up on it so we can ask good questions at the next meeting. Anything else? Anything else for the good of the order? Uh, I'd like to thank Kathy Moore, as, as always, for all of her help in setting this up, setting our meetings up, and um, keeping us organized here. So thanks, Kathy. And uh, if there's no other comments, um, God bless you all. Good night, and we stand adjourned. All right. See you guys.